Hi, it's lovely to see you. I hope you're well and that you've been looking after yourself. Today's vlog is all about the amazing stories I have been learning from the locals here along the Chesterfield Canal. So this is it. Today is the day that we finished the Chesterfield Canal. A couple of worries. Will we get through the pound after Limehouse Lock, Lock 25, because it's empty? And um, can we get through the weed, I don't think there's much weed. Actually, one worry, one worry, not a couple of worries, so that's good already. Okay, I am driving today. Let's finish the Chesterfield Canal. See you later. Oh no, I feel really sad. We've grown really attached, haven't we? Okay, these are my pound buddies. They've been with me this week. And this brings me to the first story I want to tell you today that I've learned from my time in this part of the Chesterfield Canal. And actually the story belongs to Stocky. And Stocky is the cob, the male swan. So Stocky's lifetime partner wasn't actually Gloria. It was a female swan called Hilary. And one day they were on the nest together, she was laying her eggs and he was protecting her. And some local youths, this was in lockdown, came and shot both swans. And instantly Hilary was lost and Stocky was taken to the Swan Rescue Centre. The wonderful local people quickly raised £4,000 in reward money for anyone who could come forward and tell them what had happened to their beloved swans. Meanwhile, Stocky is recovering in the Swan Rescue Centre alongside a female swan who is recovering from a different injury. The two of them bonded. So the right hand side here you can see the work boats and that brings me to the next story that I'd like to share with you about the Chesterfield Canal. So stone is being used in a project here to improve the edge of the towpath which meets the canal. One of the workmen said that in this particular pound they were going to make sure they used heritage stone because they hadn't done that in the previous pound and it had upset the locals. And that's for a good reason. After the great fire that burnt down the Houses of Parliament, new stone was needed for the rebuild. So the stone travelled all the way along the Chesterfield Canal in what was then called a cuckoo boat which is the working boats that went up and down the Chesterfield and they didn't have engines, the people didn't live on board, they lived close by to the canal that worked them and they had a mast for when they went out onto the River Trent. So now I'm going into a triple lock, so it's a triple staircase and because I'm going up 
Mr. M would have filled up the very top of it and I have an empty one so going at the bottom and then he's just going to push the water down to me through each lock. I'm not sure if I to explain that really clearly but we'll have a look so we're going through it now. Because this is a quiet canal and I am using the treble staircase lock, it's quite a thing for anybody that is on the towpath to see happening. So the, you can see the cyclist behind me stops cycling and gets his camera out to take a picture of the whole thing. Next to the wood, nesting in the beans, is a bird I hardly ever see, the gorgeous yellow wagtail. So I've made my way out of the first treble lock and now I'm making my way towards Limehouse lock. All the locks here have names for certain reasons and this one is no different. It's really good when you're waiting in the lock because you get to step out and have a little look around and you can see here remains of a brick building and archaeologists found lime, limestone and storage barrels um, within the groundwork here and they believe it was a storage place for the lime, the lime helped repair the locks and locals have told me that there's still lime kilns in the woods behind. Look at this. This is an orchid, the common spotted orchid. It's the only one I can see. But now it's time to try and get through that very, very shallow pound. I've been watching it all week. It had been quite fascinating to sit and watch it, actually.
but it's still really shallow so I'm just sticking dead centre. So having made it through the shallow pound, the last challenge ahead was the really low bridge in front. So time to take the chimney off. And just when I thought we'd run out of stories, we created a little story all of our own. Because she's in the corner I think that's fine, she can stay there, she'll travel up through these two locks with us and then we'll let her out the other end. But as I move into the second lock that you see here, she shoots down the side and I'm really scared that I have squashed her so I start pushing against the lock wall to push the boat to the other side and ask these passers-by to do the same with their feet. quite shaken but the amazing people that stopped there's two couples that stopped to help push the boat out to the side I've come back into the lock behind we're filling the top lock up so she can travel up in the lock and then we're going to let her out the top lock so that's how we are getting this duck through the lock so it's a slight delay to our progress along the Chesterfield Canal uh, but at least the boat she came right down the side of the boat at least I didn't squash her. And eventually we made our way to the end of what has become my favourite canal, the Chesterfield Canal. Now you might be wondering why I haven't shown you the bits in between and that's because on the journey back I'm going to stop at those places and take you around and show you them so you don't miss out.
What did this water carry? Malt and marble, coal and coke, lead and lime on cuckoo boats, bricks and tiles, anst and stone, from cuckoo's dyke to Parliament's home, sailcloth, hops and iron ore, still this water carries more, stories stored in every pound, unlocked by locals up and down, on board I load each memory, and now this water carries me.